Alright, and it's been about like a month now since the last video. Uh, things kind of did not work out how I had planned. Uh, originally I wanted to do something every day for May We Draw Daily, but obviously with my lack of recording knowledge and knowing just what the hell I was doing as well as just trying to fix... Uh, getting some tips from friends and such, uh, figuring out, like, what to do with, like, audio and, uh, video recording and all that. It all just ended up spilling out towards June, and what I had not realized was, uh, the school semester, my last school semester, actually, um, started in June, and that just completely ate up all of my time, so... One of my classes is finally over, and that that's just wonderful because it was a really high-stress course, and, well, now I can actually get back to doing YouTube stuff, which is great. So, this video is actually, if any of you guys are following with, like, the stuff that I post now and all that, you guys already know this stuff is, like, a month old. Uh, I'm just trying to catch up with recording stuff at this point. So, these videos, I say videos because uh, this is actually uh, two videos, this is going to be two videos in one, so sorry if this is going to run a little bit longer than what I intend these videos to be, but yeah, I'm just I'm trying to get this stuff out there so I don't have to deal with it anymore and I can move on to other things. Uh... So what you're seeing right now, this is me just uh, painting over that one Rowlet sketch that I made not too long ago. Or I say not too long ago, but I freaking forget that it's been over a month now. Eh, screw it. So I pretty much, um, I've sort of started to adopt this looser sort of uh, painting technique where... Well, it's not necessarily loose, I still uh, start out with flats, uh, as you saw earlier. But, as far as the actual painting goes, I, all I do is just uh, lock the transparency of the layer itself and then just start basically... Uh, I don't want to say rendering, but... Yeah, like I just I start blocking in shadows, start blocking in highlights, just just basically everything and then uh, once it gets to a point where I just like it I just you know start rendering away at it start cleaning everything up cleaning up edges uh, modifying the silhouette and so on and so forth uh, also what you see here it's always uh, one of those important things to always make sure that you're sort of looking at the canvas as a whole, like, uh, working on the painting zoomed out. It's just, it, it, you can get so into the painting so quickly that you end up neglecting what the whole overall piece is, and then you just end up overpainting, like, one section, and then it just looks weird. Or the entire rest of the image looks weird because it's not as well rendered as that one specific spot. So it's better to always work uh, zoomed out as much as possible. We're actually getting near to the end of this first segment. I'm still sort of having trouble trying to figure out what to say um, about the whole rendering process, simply because it's just so subjective, really. Like, does the whole piece look uh, cohesive? Does do the colors harmonize, uh, is the structure well done, blah blah blah. That's sort of, like, I'm starting to realize more now that that's kind of why, uh, like, all the professionals out there sort of gloss over the whole, um, the whole finalization of a piece, like, the whole ending section, because there's just really not a lot to say. It's just, you're cleaning everything up, making it look dumb. Alright, and this is... This isn't 
like the first time I've ever done a uh, traditional drawing, but like a traditional drawing video, but this is probably like the first one I've actually posted online. And uh, hopefully, yeah. Oh god. Also, apologies for the really bright light, like, if you can't already tell, I'm working off of a light table. Uh, this is a part of the process, though, uh, that I could say quite a few things about. So, what you saw earlier, uh, clearly there's a sheet behind there with a bunch of different poses and stuff. Normally, how I like to start, uh, the day is I'll actually just tear out a sheet of copy paper and just do a couple of inventive figure poses or however you want to call those basically just drawing figures without reference uh i find it just like a good way to start the day just as a nice little warm-up or whatever so i just end up with like hundreds of these little sheets of like just random poses all over the place so those are actually really useful to hold on to specifically for this reason like uh, when you're doing like some concepting or whatever like really just uh, even if you don't have a light table just hold it up to a window or whatever and just trace out the pose and then just use it as a base to like design clothing or uh, figure out armor or like mech parts or whatever it's just it's a good way to just get a solid base without really uh, spending brain power on it so much uh in terms of the actual concept itself right here uh, uh jesus i'm trying to stop with those damn ums but whatever uh i'm still planning on doing the whole pokemon jajinka series it's just i haven't had the time to actually work on that because uh what i stated before why i sort of disappeared for a whole month uh school just drowned me in work. Not that I haven't actually been figuring out uh, some specific poses and stuff. As far as like the actual posing for like the actual pinup models, like that's all been worked out and uh, I have a couple more designs for what I want the characters to look like. But now it's just uh, putting them all the pieces, putting all the pieces together rather. Uh, this one right now uh, specifically is Vespican. I think like the dress more or less was the most interesting part of it just because it's just sort of like a given more or less in terms of like shape language usually it's actually um the hardest part of trying to uh translate like oh god how do you say that word anthro anthropomorphize or whatever the hardest part of just like transitioning a creature into like a humanoid character is definitely like it has to be their top for whatever reason just because uh, I guess there's just so many potential like outcomes and such for it but not uh, honestly I don't know I don't know why that would be the more challenging bit uh, moving on to another concept uh, sketch right here. This one's actually uh, for Litten, which I already sort of had in mind a very specific look for, which, which, um, oh god, what is the name for that? I, I don't want to say uh, Gothic Lolita because it's not that. It's um, a fashion type uh, closely related to it, uh, very gothy and it. Uh, appearance but the name just escapes me right now which I kind of like find that sort of interesting which like it, it kind of goes uh, hand in hand with those things like design stereotypes where uh, when the new Pokemon got announced uh, everybody sort of just started applying these stereotypical looks to uh, each and every one of the characters, like if you look at all the other uh, Jijinkas that people have made out there, like Litten is just constantly like this little punk type, like punk rock girl. Uh, Rowlet is always this like 
sort of rotund, uh, like, nerd dude, and, uh, same thing with Poplio is like a clownish character. It's, I just find that so interesting that everybody just kind of, like, funnels them into these, like, specific looks, but I guess, uh, you gotta make them relatable in some sense, like, uh, I mean, that's the whole point of concept art as a whole, is make something fantastical that uh, no one's ever seen before, but do it in a way that they can relate to it in some way or form. Uh, here, I actually, um, for Litten, like, really, it was the head design that was uh, the complicated thing for me. Like, I had to actually do a little concept here specifically for the, just to figure out, like, okay, what is your hair doing? What is that little symbol thing on your forehead? Like, I, I sort of uh, decided that it was just going to be, like, some kind of, like, little hairpin or something that's offset. And obviously, if any of you guys have seen, like, Yumi's art, like, you know where those headphones came from. Yeah. That's the whole point of art. Just borrowing from life, after all. Or concept art, rather. This specifically concept art, yeah. Like, huh. I guess uh, when you comes to like fine art or just illustration or whatever you do want to be like as original as possible yeah i don't judge honestly i've seen enough things to know that all basically all gloves are off once you're in the ring but yeah we're actually nearing the end of uh, this video segment i wanted to do a third concept uh one for absol but uh, I don't know what happened, I had some kind of muscle spasm in my hand, and I was trying to tough through it, like, this entire drawing session, but it eventually became too much, and, yeah, 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 it's fine. Just filling in some of the little red details right there, just figuring out where exactly, uh, that sort of motif's gonna go with the design. Bring up the ears because I did not realize that the inside of Linton's ears were actually white, which is kind of weird, like as far as a visual aesthetic goes. But yeah, that's the end of the video right here, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any comments or whatever, I would appreciate the feedback. Let me know what you guys thought. If you like have any ideas for improvements or whatever or like suggestions on what i should do or what i should cover like by all means let me know all right later see you in the next one